You're listening to Feathers, a podcast of stories of women walking in faith. I hope these stories inspire you and encourage you to take flight in your own faith. I'm your host, Amy Bennett, and this is Season 7, Episode 11. Feathers is an outreach of Abiding Ministries. Find more encouragement at abidingministries.net. Well, hey, friend, and welcome back to Feathers this week. Uh, This episode is going to be a little different than normal. I actually had a hard time scheduling a guest for this week, and I was trying to really figure out what I was going to do. You know, I've been praying about what to do, whether to just skip the week or what, and I had this message sort of plop in my lap today and really just felt like I should share it instead of skipping the week. Um, So today we're just going to spend a few minutes talking, and then next week our guest is Lynn Cow. So no worries if you're not a fan of this format, we will have a guest next week week. Um, But today I want to talk about five reasons you're stuck from taking your next step. So on this podcast, we talk to women all the time who have stepped out in faith, but maybe you are having trouble doing the same thing. So today I want to break down five common reasons you might be stuck and then equip you with a verse that you can begin praying to prepare you to take that next step. All right, a few weeks ago, we had a pastor Uh, that preached at our church that named a few kind of profiles of people he was teaching about. And I felt like it was so helpful uh, to actually put, you know, a kind of handle on what he was teaching. So I'm actually going to do that here. So today I'm going to introduce you to five people that you might recognize in your own life. So the first person I want to introduce you to today that you might be like is Not Enough Nancy. Not Enough Nancy. So Not Enough Nancy... Uh, She is the person who God has asked her to do something and she feels ill equipped. She just doesn't feel like she is enough to take up the task. And when we look in the Bible for somebody like this, this would be like the Moses who says that he could not lead the Israelites because he had a speech problem. And so you look at what God has asked you to do and you're just like that. I, I am not the right person for that. You know, maybe God has been asking you to write a book and you say, oh, I'm a speaker. I'm not a writer. I couldn't write that much. Or I've never written. I hated writing. There's never no way I could write that much. You know, or maybe he's asking you to start some sort of nonprofit and you're saying, how do I have time for that? I don't know the knowledge about, you know, how to set up a nonprofit. I wouldn't even know where to begin to set that up. And so you feel like you're not enough for what God is calling you to do. You know, maybe he is asking you to adopt and you just feel like you just cannot handle the pressure and the stress and what it would take emotionally to be an adoptive mom. You just feel like whatever it is that God is calling you to do, that you are not enough. I totally get that. I have felt that way so many times, even doing this podcast. I just felt like, God, you have got the wrong person trying to speak and to do this podcast. And yet God has equipped me all of these years to be able to do it. And I know whatever not enough Nancy out there is feeling that way. I know that God, if he has called you to it, he will equip you. And one of the things I want to encourage you with not enough Nancy is from Hebrews 13, 21. And it's actually a verse that Paul prayed at the end of Hebrews. And I think it's something that you can pray if you are not enough Nancy. This is what he prays. May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. So he says, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. And so I think that's the same thing. Not enough Nancy's can pray that that God would equip you with everything you need for doing his will. And so if it's God calling you to do his will, he will equip you and you can pray right now that God will begin equipping you. You know, you may not be equipped for what he is asking you to do, but he will provide at just the right time uh, for you for you to be able to carry out his good plans for you. So trust that even if you don't have it right now, that he will equip you and you just need to take that next step and um, he will provide. I really believe that. All right, number two. Number two are, she is called Angry Anna. Angry Anna. Now, Angry Anna doesn't want to do what God wants 
her to do because she's still angry and does not love the people that God is calling her to do. If you want to take a a page from the Bible and a character from the Bible who might be an angry Anna, it's like Jonah. If you think about Jonah, he did not want to go to Nineveh because he did not care and did not want good things for the Ninevites, right? So he was willing, you know, to go to jump off uh, a boat and die and go in a whale's mouth because he did not want to help those people. And he just fought and fought and fought to do what God was asking him to do because he just didn't have the compassion for those people. And so I think sometimes, you know, angry Anna's, God is calling us to a lot of times like forgive somebody or reach out to somebody to do good for somebody, to do good for a group of people. And we're just too mad about it. We just do not have the compassion that God would have us to do. And we're, we just don't want to do it because we're just still angry at them. We just, or we just don't care. We're maybe it's somebody that just did you wrong and you are not ready to do good to them. So you are just refusing to do it because you um, are still angry. So angry Anna, this is what I want to say. We need to pray from John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. So we have um, this great God who has loved us, who has forgiven us, for all that we have done now and in the future. And he has saved us. And we are called to love, not because people deserve it. That's not what it says. We love because people deserve it. We don't love because we feel like it. We don't love um, because we should. We love because he first loved us. And we can, with that love that he has given us, pour out our love to other people. Because really, honestly, aren't we all guilty of sin in our own lives and hasn't God been so good to us to forgive and um, we can just pray that God would give us that kind of love that the same kind of love that loved us that he would just give us compassion for the people he is calling us to and that we would love them with the same type of love it's such a sacrificial love it's a grace-filled love it's it's an, a love that doesn't make sense kind of love and so for angry Anna's um, I think we just begin to pray that God would give us the love for people that maybe we don't have right now. So that was John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. All right. The third reason that you may be stuck today, um, this is for selfish Susie's. Oh, that one hurts. Selfish Susie's. Um, If I think about a selfish Susie, Selfish Susie isn't doing the next step just because she wants her way more than what God is asking her to do. Let's think about Solomon. So Solomon was told not to intermarry. And then he ended up doing that, right? He ended up having like 700 wives. And that was direct disobedience to God. And they ended up pulling him away from God and he became unfaithful to the Lord. And that was disobedience simply because, and I am very sure of it, that Solomon selfishly wanted those women. He wanted the love of these women and their company um, more than he wanted to obey what God wanted. And that's for him to stay away from them and to be pure uh, with the people um, that he that he was with. And so sometimes God asks us to do something and we just want our way more. We just want our way more. And we are just selfish with it and say, you know, that's great, God. And um, I, you know, I'm not angry about it, uh, but I'm just not going to do that. So I think sometimes that we can just be selfish about it and we just don't want what God wants. And so for the selfish Susies, um, it's kind of hard to, hard to, you know, label yourself like that. Um, but here's something that we can pray. Philippians 2, 3 through 4 says, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. And so, so often what God is calling us to do is really not about ourselves, is it? It's um, often about other people and what he has um, for us to do for other people. And so we want to do, we don't want to do anything out of selfishness. And so we could just pray, selfish Susie's, that God um, would give us a humility and that we would not regard ourselves better than other people. All right. 
So the fourth one would be people pleasing Penelope. People pleasing Penelope. So people pleasing Penelope is the girl who God has asked them to do something, but she doesn't want to do it because she's scared of what other people are going to think. She is more concerned about what people think than um, what God wants. And oh man, I have been people pleasing Penelope. Oh, but listen, I've been all of these people. Let's just be real. But I have struggled so much with being people pleasing Penelope through the years. I think about the times that God has called us to do something really hard that perhaps was really hard for um, even family. So if I think about us, our family, um, at the time it was just me, Sky, and our firstborn, we moved to Columbia and just really felt the Lord leading us there. And moving was not some of our family's favorite move ever, right? You move with the uh, grandbaby, the new grandbaby. And um, so I had to really... Um, just obey what I felt like the Lord was wanting for our family and not what our family was wanting. But there have been plenty of times that I have not done what the Lord was uh, asking because just really worried about what people would think. Well, if I speak up at this time, um, then what are they going to say? Am I going to look silly? Um, am I going to look stupid? Um, so often I felt like I was going to look stupid and I did not speak out or did not do the thing or I didn't write a blog post or um, didn't reach out to somebody because uh, what are they going to think if I just call them out of the blue? Something like that. And so that would be people pleasing Penelope. And um, this is something, like I said, that I have worked through really hard with the Lord. And one of the verses that has uh, made a big difference in my life, and I want to offer to you, is Galatians 1.10. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. And that is definitely something that we can pray, even in the moment. When you, I mean, you once you see that it's an issue and you can catch yourself doing it, sometimes you have to just ask yourself, just like uh, Paul did in Galatians, um, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? And ask that question of yourself and then, you know, ask God for the courage to be able to please him and not people. Um, all right. So the last one is... Um, con- Um, controlling Connie, controlling Connie, controlling Connie has a problem with trust because perhaps God has given her something to do and she really doesn't understand why she doesn't really understand what's going on with God. Why would he ask her to do this? It doesn't make sense. She's not really sure how it's going to turn out. She doesn't really know the whole thing is foggy. She doesn't have a plan from step one to step 10 about how it's going to go. And there's a lot of things that she's unsure about. So she's just not, she's just not sure about it. So she's just not going to do it because she wants to be able to control the situation. She wants to understand how it's going to turn out, what's going to happen, um, all of this. And so really she's not trusting his way. And from a biblical, um, perspective, you can think about, um, Saul and at times that Saul, um, just, you know, he, I don't think he, God asked him to do certain things and he just didn't do it. And um, I don't think that he had that trust with God to be able to follow through with what God was asking him to do. And so the verse that I would offer um, you, if you are, find yourself as a controlling Connie, um, is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And we actually talked about this last week with Christina Adkins um, in It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. And this is for sure another, of course, thing that I have struggled with. But a lot of times God's um, direction just doesn't make sense. Um, There's been people that, you know, we've had on the podcast where God has asked them, you know, to quit their job and they're not really sure why or where they're going. Um, And some people would say, no, I'm not willing to let go of my job because I'm not really sure why. And I'm not surely sure really what's going to, you know, uh, take care of us from there. Or maybe you just feel like, you know, God is calling you to a new city, but you're not really sure why. Um, I think about Susie Eller and God was calling them to move out um, to the Midwest, I believe. And they did not really figure out 
um, why God called them to that area for a long time, but they were obedient. But sometimes, you know, we don't say yes. Sometimes we, um, we don't understand why. And so we just don't do it because we really want control of the situation. But we uh, can lean into that Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So I would say pray that God would help you um, to trust him trust him and to not lean on your own understanding, but to lean on him in his ways. And really it's a submission because it says in all your ways, submit to him. So really, you know, ask him to help you to submit, um, to have a submissive heart and a humble heart to be able to um, do what he's asking you to do. Because the promise there is that he will make your path straight. When you are following what God wants you to do, he will make your path straight. All right, so not enough Nancys, angry Annas, selfish Susies, people pleasing Penelopes, controlling Connies. I think we all have been uh, one of these at one time or another. But what is the next step that you really feel like God is asking you to do at the moment? And what bucket would you really, what profile, what person would you um, call yourself now? Um, I definitely can see, you know, personally myself as an angry Anna in some situations. Um, you know, in other situations in my life right now, I see myself as a people uh, pleasing Penelope. Even still, I have worked through so much of it. Um, but even, you know, in a little way, doing this kind of conversation with you today, I. I have, I still have these thoughts. Well, what will people think if it's, I don't have an interview and I just do something, you know, alone. So even still, even though I feel like it's, it's a big mountain that has moved in my life, I still struggle with it and it still comes up a little, but you see, I'm here doing it. So, um, I'm trusting that God is speaking to you through this and that he is going to use it, um, for good. Um, so I, you know, I just think, um, we all uh, do not have this figured out and that we all can identify with one of these at one time or the another. And so I just really um, would encourage you to take hold of those verses that I shared and really begin to pray that um, God would help you do your next step. Because really, you know, this is all about um, us being um, servants of Christ and that we really are those bond servants that willingly follow our Lord. And he has something good for the kingdom through what he is asking you to do. Um, and he is going to grow you through uh, whatever he is asking you to. And it is going to be good. It might be hard, especially at the beginning to take that step. It might be really hard, but I really believe it's going to be good, good for the kingdom um, and ultimately um, good for you. And uh, that will be the way that we can please God is to do um, do his bidding and do his calling. And ultimately, I think that's what we all want. I think we all do want to uh, please God and to build his kingdom so other people can know him like we know him. Um, but it's hard. I do get it. It's hard. And I, so I just want to encourage you um, in all of these ways that you're not alone. We all struggle. We don't all have it figured out, including myself, Uh, but God uh, can help you. And I think, you know, sometimes when we struggle, we just have to be honest with God to say we are struggling and to back up and that simply that we would pray that God would um, enable us to obey him and enable us to want to obey him. So I hope um, that encouraged you in one way or the other. I'm trusting that God is um, going to use that and encourage you. And like I said, we are going to be back with a guest next week. I'm excited for that one. And um, as always, I want to encourage you guys to follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram at Abiding Ministries. would love to have you there again. Um, if you do like this format uh, with just one person kind of talking, um, I do share a devotional for about 10 minutes every morning on all the weekday mornings on Facebook at Abiding Ministries again. And I would love to see you over there to do that. All right, guys, I think that is going to be it for this week. I'm so glad we got to chat for a few minutes. Thanks for checking in again and for listening. And we will see you back next week on Feathers.